Hello everyone, this is Japan Sci-Fi. Today, we will break down all the 26 mechs, including mobile suits and ships that are confirmed to appear in the upcoming movie. A variety of mechs have already been confirmed for the movie, so today we will explain all the confirmed mechs, from the major ones like Rising Freedom to a No One Knows cargo truck. We will also delve into the lesser known details about each mech. By watching this, you should be able to enjoy the movie 909% more. Let's review the mechs together. First, we will discuss the mobile suits belonging to Compass. The first one is STTS-909 Rising Freedom. Further analysis from third trailer and Gunpla suggests that the armaments of Rising Freedom include two head-mounted machine guns, a beam rifle, two beam sabers, two high-output beam cannons, the Agni cannons on the shoulders, two rail guns on the waist, and an offensive shield system. This system includes a shield and three beam blades for offense. This shield likely has two thrusters, potentially functioning as a kind of dragoon. In the third trailer, it transitions from deactive mode to active mode, suggesting that instead of the Alliance's TPS armor, it employs VPS armor like Strike Freedom. A notable feature is the likely absence of NJC, the red particles characteristic of freedom and strike freedom during operation are not generated, implying non-nuclear power. Thus, it's likely that rising freedom operates on battery power. In the cosmic era world, high output battery packs known as power extenders used in second stage series have become widespread. It's natural to assume that rising freedom employs power extender technology. A major difference from Strike Freedom is its capability to transform into mobile armor mode. From the scene in the third trailer, it's assumed that this transformation facilitates efficient movement for atmospheric re-entry or long-distance travel on battery power. We can also confirm Full Burst Mode, aka HiMAT Full Burst. Next is STTS-808 Immortal Justice. Further analysis from third trailer and Gunpla suggests that its armaments include two head-mounted machine guns, four chest-mounted machine guns, a beam rifle, two beam sabers, two leg-mounted beam cutters, probably the Griffin beam blades, and an offensive shield system similar to Rising Freedom. Likely developed around the same time as Rising Freedom, it's presumed to have mobile armor transformation, VPS armor, and battery-powered operation. Unlike Justice and Infinite Justice, Immortal Justice lacks FOTM, likely due to power consumption issues. Its main color is red, which consumes more power, making it difficult to ensure operational power for FOTM, which could one-shot destroy Minerva. Next is Gien Strom, which at a glance resembles Zaft's Bobby, especially the protrusions on the head. The head and torso resemble Universal Century's Gian. Before discussing Gian Strom's armaments, Let's review original Gaian's weaponry. A prototype beam saber, missile shield, and a shield incorporating mines or missiles. Gian Strom inherits the golden beam saber on the waist and has missile launchers on its wings. In the third trailer, a saw-like beam blade emerges from the shield, crushing a 105 dagger. Given Gaian's shield was an offensive and defensive equipment, Gaian Strom might also incorporate other weapons like missiles. Enlarging a scene shows two Gion Stroms in formation with Immortal Justice. Gion aimed to be a mainline mass production unit, so Gion Strom might have succeeded Gelgug as a mass produced unit in Seed's world, though unlikely. It also has interchangeable space and atmospheric packs for versatility in different environments. Next is Gelgug Menace. From third trailer and Gunpla, it's inferred that its armaments include two chest-mounted machine guns, a beam Naginata, also known as double-bladed beam saber, beam rifle, railgun, beam shield with linear guns and missile launchers on the wings. These wings, like Gion Stroms, have interchangeable space and atmospheric packs. Comparing the wings of Gelgug, Menace, and Gion Strom, while their weapons differ, the unit's shapes and colors are the same. This might suggest a system where only the weapons are interchangeable, sharing the same connector standards. From the head shape and overall silhouette, Gelgug Menace appears to be an evolved form of Zaku Warrior. In Seed Destiny, Luna was on her red Zaku Warrior. If this red Gelgug Menace is Luna's machine, standard Gelgug Menaces might also appear. Lastly, for Compass units is Force Impulse, Gundam Spec 2. This is a variant of Impulse with Force Silhouette, 
used by Seed Destiny's protagonist, Shin. Analysis from Gunpla suggests that Force Impulse Spec 2's armaments are the basic ones from Impulse. Two chest-mounted machine guns, two knives on each side of the waist, a beam rifle, and a shield, plus two beam sabers from Force Silhouette. It seems there's no difference in armaments from the standard Impulse. Likely, internal upgrades have been made, allowing operation without Minerva, and possibly the Phantom Destiny silhouette has been realized. However, since Specii does not have Compass Force marking on its shoulder, rumor has it, Athron on Espionage Mission will be on Impulse Spec 2. Next, let's look at Foundation's MS, starting with Black Knight Squad Shive at A. Its armaments, inferred from Gunpla, include two chest-mounted machine guns, a sword, a single-hilt beam saber, twin beam saber, an offensive and defensive system with a shield capable of shooting, and a beam mantle. The beam mantle is a distinctive feature, adding a noble air to the mech. However, the weaponry of Shive Ed A is known to be very similar to the one with Infinite Justice. Both have beam blade on legs, double beam saber, and beam grapple. So this Black Knight could be developed based on Infinite Justice's data. Looking closely at Black Knight's gunplay or third trailer, the joints are golden, possibly indicating PS armor material used in the frame, which colors, when electrified, like Strike Freedom. This mechanism requires a large amount of power, often seen in NJC-equipped units. Furthermore, the color of the beam mantle is red, indicative of nuclear power suggesting that the Foundation might be using treaty-violating NJC-equipped units. Shiva is an Hinduism god, but since this suit is spelled as Shiv.A, which has capital A meaning atomic, the nuclear engine mobile suit. Just like Freedom and Justice, they are ZGMFX-10A, which A indicates atomic, the nuclear engine. Next, we'll talk about the Black Knight Sword Rudro Day. Judging from the gun pla, the armaments of the Black Knight Sword Rudro by A include two machine guns on the chest, a laser anti-ship sword, a beam rifle, a shield with a projectable attack defense system, and a beam cloak. A significant feature of this Black Knight Sword Rudro A is its variety. From the information released, parts of the unit are colored pink, orange, green, and blue, indicating the presence of four MS with these colors. Since the main color of the unit is black, it's natural to think that the colors are meant to be visually distinctive and perhaps to help the pilots feel attached to their machines, rather than indicating any difference in performance like BPS armor. Is the difference between Black Knight Sword Shive the A and Rudro Bo A only in armament and coloring? In fact, the possibility has emerged whether it's an NJC equipped unit or not. As explained earlier, we speculated that Black Knight Sword Shive Da A is an NJC equipped unit because its joint parts are gold colored. On the other hand, the joint parts of Black Knight Sword Rudro Ba A are black, the same color as Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice. Since Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice are likely not NJC-equipped units, same can be said for this Black Knight. Next, let's look at the mass-produced units of the Earth Alliance. First, the high-performance mass-produced unit, 105 Dagger. The model number of the 105 Dagger is JAT01A1, with a total height of 18.00M and a weight of 57.05T. The armaments include a machine gun in the head, a beam carbine, two beam sabers, a submachine gun on the top of the foot, an anti-beam shield, and a striker pack system. In the third trailer, it's seen being destroyed into pieces by Rising Freedom and Guyanstrom, but with the striker pack system, laminate armor in the vital areas, and the 100 frame adopted from the GAT X series, it's an excellent unit in terms of performance. This scene in the second trailer, among others, suggests cool scenes of battles between mass-produced units. Next is the large variable mobile armor, Destroy Gundam. The model number of Destroy is GFS X1, with a total height of 56.30M, head height of 38.07M, and weight of 404.93T. The armaments include a machine gun and beam cannon in the head, two twin long-range high-output beam cannons, and a six-tube missile launcher on the back, three large-caliber beam cannons on the chest, a total of 20 beam cannons on the mobile armor mode. 
Other weapons are beam cannons on the forearm and three positron reflector generators for defense. The amount of armaments is top-notch, especially in the post-war world of cosmic era. Next is the Windam, a unit realizing the complete mass production of Strike Gundam. The model number of Windam is Gate 04, with a total height of 18.67M and a weight of 58.20T. The armaments include a total of four Vulcan guns on the head and chest, two beam sabers on both hips, a beam rifle, small throwing knives on both hip armors, and a shield carrying two missiles. It's a unit that realizes the complete mass production of strike. And in third trailer, a Wyndham equipped with a jet striker is shot down by Rising Freedom. Next is the first Zaft Army General Purpose mass-produced MS in the Cosmic Era world, Jin. The model number of GIN is ZGMF-1017, with a total height of 21.43M and a weight of 78.5T. In third trailer, GINs equipped with assault rifles, recoilless guns, and de-equipment missile launchers are seen. From this scene in third trailer, it's highly likely that the GINs with de-equipment belong to the Foundation. On the other hand, in this scene, a childlike character appears in the cockpit so it can be said that the assault rifle and recoilless gun are owned by anti-Earth Alliance guerrilla forces. Next, let's look at the mass-produced MS that newly appeared in the third trailer, starting with Zaf's atmospheric MS, DIN. The model number is AMF-101 with a total height of 18.93M and a weight of 37, 33T. From the third trailer, the armaments of DIN include assault rifles, shotguns, and a multi-launcher on the chest, and there are also units equipped with de-equipment missile launchers. Besides the regular DIN, a Commander DIN also appears. Similar to Jin, it's likely that the Wealthy Foundation is purchasing or mass-producing old MS. Next is Zaft's Land Warfare Bombardment MS Suat. The model number is TFA-2, with a total height of 17.86M and a weight of 83. 59T. The armaments include heavy assault machine guns, twin subguns, two twin cannon guns on both shoulders, and smoke dischargers on the head. This unit was developed before Seed and was considered outdated in the early stages of Seed. In the third trailer, it's thought that guerrillas, not Zaft, acquired Zoot and are operating the old unit, which makes sense. Next, let's talk about Murasame Kai. Since the exact name of this Murasame Kai is unknown, we can only speculate about its performance based on the original unit. Murasami is a mass-produced MS developed by Orb with the model number MVFM-11C, a total height of 17.82M and a weight of 46, 88T. The armaments include a total of six machine guns, a beam cannon on the back, anti-air missiles on the waist, a beam rifle, a beam saber on the left waist, and a shield. Although Murasame appeared in Sea Destiny, when you look at this scene in the third trailer, you can see the difference with Murasame Kai. In fact, the shape of the wing has changed to a swept wing. Lastly, let's look at other mechs. First is Archangel Kai. Although the name is not clear, it's undoubtedly modified from the original Archangel. The registry number of the original ship is Elkam 01XA, with a total length of 420M. The armaments include two positron cannons on both ship bows, twin beam cannons on both sides of the ship bow, linear guns on both sides of the ship stern, 16 anti-air machine guns, 16 ship anti-air missile launch tubes behind the bridge, all 24 large missile launch tubes, multi-purpose launchers, and torpedo launch tubes. And from the second trailer, the registry number has changed to SCC-101, and it seems that missile launch tubes have been added. It's a more polished Archangel. In the second trailer, only the armaments are destroyed in the scenes that appear. However, since the bridge and other parts are not destroyed, there's a possibility of emergency landing and survival. Next is Zaf's new ship, Minerva Kai. Uh, Minerva didn't appear, did it? I think many people thought so. In fact, there's a possibility that the ship from which Rising Freedom launched at the beginning of the third trailer is Minerva Kai. If you enlarge this scene, you can see structures resembling a beam main gun and a huge variable wing like Minerva when Rising Freedom launches. The registry number of the original Minerva is LHM BB01 with a total length of about 350 mm. The armaments include a positron cannon in the center of the ship bow, 
twin beam main guns on both sides of the ship's stern, a triple gun with gunpowder in the center of the ship bow, numerous quadruple missile launch tubes, and four torpedo launch tubes. In the official drama CD that depicted the post-sea destiny, the Deputy Captain Arthur mentioned to Atherin, Minerva had its engine shot by you and made an emergency landing, so it didn't end up too badly, referring to the fact that Minerva crash-landed on the moon. It's likely that Minerva was repaired and might reappear as Minerva Kai in the movie. Next are the missiles that appeared in the second trailer. As explained in past videos, it's a single missile with multiple stage rocket engines, so it's probably a nuclear missile. In third trailer, a screen during the missile launch sequence appears. It's likely a scene depicting the launch of this nuclear missile. Next is Zaf's most popular armored vehicle, the six-wheel armored vehicle. From the scene in the third trailer, the armaments include a small caliber chain gun. This armored vehicle has been active since Seed and is responsible for maintaining public order in urban areas where MS activity is easily restricted and defending bases. In the third trailer, a missile directly hits the armored vehicle. It's likely that the attack aimed at the armored vehicle to induce a secondary explosion as the din next to it would intercept the missile. Next is the Zaft military vehicle, the ammunition cargo truck that appeared in the third trailer. This trailer is a support vehicle for transporting supplies to the front lines. The appearance of supply-related vehicles going to the front lines shows that the movie is made with attention to detail. Lastly, let's talk about the atmospheric breakthrough shuttle that appeared in the third trailer. Looking at this scene, it's used to go into space, and at the end, Gian Strom and Gelgug Menis are separating. Therefore, the purpose of this shuttle is to carry MS that cannot leave the atmosphere on their own. By the way, in Seed Destiny, episode 39, a strike booster was used to carry the Strike Rouge, piloted by Kira, into space. This shuttle and strike booster have similar rocket engine nozzles and wing shapes. This shuttle might be an improved version of the strike booster. That's the explanation and speculation on the 26 mechs that are known to appear in Seed Freedom at this point. Seeing this, many mechs that appeared in Seed are making a reappearance, so watching the third trailer made me feel somewhat nostalgic. Which mech do you like? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If this video gives you new findings, please like and subscribe to this channel. I love analyzing the Gundam series frame by frame and love to share the findings with you guys. It is a small channel and I very much love your support. This was Japan Sci-Fi signing off.